Welcome to Prism Technologies. I am Venkat. This is part 101 of ASP.NET video series. In this session, we'll understand the term self-signed certificates, creating self-signed certificates, configuring an ASP.NET web application to use SSL, that's use HTTPS instead of HTTP, importing and exporting certificates. In part 100 of this video series, we have discussed the basics of SSL. If you haven't watched that, I would strongly encourage you to do so before continuing with the session. So what's a self-signed certificate? A self-signed certificate is an identity certificate that's signed by its own creator. For example, I create the certificate and then I sign it by myself. Certificates in general are signed by certificate authority. Self-signed certificates are fine for testing purposes but not for production use. And that makes sense because why should the end user trust a certificate that's created by an individual and then that's signed by that same individual again. There are several ways to create self-signed certificates. Let's explore two of the easier options that are available. I would say the easiest option to create a self-signed certificate is by using IIS. Let's flip to IIS. So within IIS, select the server name and then within the features list, scroll down and select server certificates under IIS. So double click server certificates to expand the feature. And then within this, you have a link here, create self-signed certificate that's present under actions pane. Now click on that link and then all you have to do is specify a friendly name for the certificate. Now I'm going to specify the friendly name as prasad-pc. That's the name of my computer. Now if you want to know the name of your computer, there are several ways. In Visual Studio, just type host name and press enter. That should return the name of your computer or click on start button, right click on computer, select properties. Computer properties window should show the computer name as well. Okay, so once we fill in the friendly name for the certificate, click OK and that's it. The certificate will be created for us automatically. So that's the friendly name of the uh, certificate issued to Prasad-PC, issued by Prasad-PC and the expiration date is near from now. Okay, so this is one way to create a self-signed certificate. What's the other way? We can use a tool called makecert.exe that comes along with Visual Studio. We don't have to download it separately. Now, this is a command line tool, so obviously we'll have to run it from Visual Studio Command Prompt. To open Visual Studio Command Prompt, click on the Start button, All Programs, Microsoft Visual Studio 2010, Visual Studio Tools, Visual Studio Command Prompt, right click on that and run it as an administrator. So once you have Visual Studio Command Prompt, then you can use this command line tool. And this tool has got several options. Um, as you can see here, there are several options for this tool and these options can be classified into basic and extended options. Now what does each option mean here? There's actually an excellent article on MSDN which tells what each option is going to do. And I'll have this URL pasted on my blog so you can get it from there. So that's the URL and look at this, we have these basic options and then extended options. And then there are several examples of creating these certificates as well. So if you're keen on knowing how to use this tool, you can get those details from here. But then, the, as I told you, the easiest way to create a certificate is by using uh, this feature in IIS, Create Self-Signed Certificate. Okay, so let's go ahead and use this tool here. Now let's quickly, um, you know, look at some of the options here. Make cert.exe, that's the tool, that's the executable. Hyphen R indicates that we are creating a self-signed certificate. Hyphen P indicates that the private key of the certificate is exportable, which means that private key can be part of the certificate and we can export that certificate. Hyphen N indicates the name of the certificate, which we specify using CN is equal to, and then you specify the name of your certificate here, I have specified localhost, or you can specify your website name. Hyphen B indicates the validity start date, and hyphen E indicates the validity end date of the certificate, and there are several options like this. So let's go ahead and copy this. Now at the moment, we already have one certificate that we have created using this Create Self-Signed Certificate feature of IIS. Now we are going to create another certificate using a make cert.exe tool. I press enter, we get a message succeeded, and then I come back to IIS. Let's go ahead and open the server certificates once again. And look at this, I have this certificate which is created by make cert.exe and this certificate created by uh, IIS. Okay, now let's go ahead and see how to associate these one of these certificates 
to an ASP.NET web application. So within IIS, I already have a web application created, web application one that we have been working with in the previous sessions of this video series. Now, to access this web application, obviously, as you know, we you know, we type this address in the browser, HTTP colon forward slash forward slash. I can specify localhost or the name of the computer. Prasad hyphen PC is the name of the computer, forward slash, the application name in IIS, which is web application one, and then forward slash the page that you want to access, login.aspx. So let me copy this and then open that within the browser window. And as you might expect, I will be able to access this application. Okay, but then if I copy the same URL, open another browser tab and then paste it there and then use HTTPS instead of HTTP, press enter. Let's see what's going to happen. We will get an error because at the moment the server is not configured to support HTTPS, that is SSL. Okay, so let's see how to do that. Obviously, to associate an ASP.NET web application with a specific certificate, we have to add an HTTPS binding if it's not already present within IIS. Let's see how to add this binding. So within IIS, you know, click on default website and then click on bindings. At the moment, I only have an HTTP binding, meaning the websites that I have installed on this IIS server can only be accessed using HTTP protocol. Now, if I want to access them using HTTPS protocol, then I have to add a binding for that. Okay, so click on this add button and then select HTTPS here. And look at this, the moment I select HTTPS, I get another drop down here, SSL certificate. Now, unless and until I select a certificate from this drop down list, the OK button is not enabled, which means without an SSL certificate, we cannot create an HTTPS binding. And if you look at the SSL certificates that we have, these are the two certificates that we have created. The first one using Visual uh, IIS and the second one using makesert.exe. Now, if I select the first one and click on view, look at that, the certificate, it shows the certificate information to whom it was issued, whom, by whom it was issued, and the validity date, etc. And you can see other details as well. And look at this, this certificate, you know, looks fine. But on the other hand, look at this, if I select the certificate that I have created using makesert.exe and click on view, uh, you know, the certificate is fine. It is issued to, issued by everything. But then here it says, um, the CA root certificate is not trusted. To enable trust, install the certificate in the trusted root certification authority store. So the certificates that I create using IIS are automatically installed into that trusted root certification authority store. Whereas the certificates that I create using makesert.exe are not. Okay, and it's very easy to install them into the uh, Trusted Root Certification Authority Store. We'll, we'll talk about that in a later video session. So I click OK. Now I'm going to select uh, Prasad-PC, which we created using IIS, and I'm going to click OK there. Okay, so we have two bindings now, HTTP and HTTPS. I click Close now. Look at this. Now I have both the options. Browse the site using HTTP, browse the site using HTTPS as well because I have both the bindings there. Okay. Now let me go ahead and refresh this. I click Enter. Look at that. I am able to access that site. Now here I have a certificate error. That's only an issue with Google Chrome. But if I open that with IE, it works fine. Actually, there is a patch to resolve that issue. Um, We'll talk about that later. But then if I open the same URL within IE, it works fine. Okay, so I'm able to access the site using HTTPS, but if I try to access the site using HTTP, look at that, I'm still able to use both the bindings, HTTP and HTTPS. Okay, now let's say I want to allow only uh, to access the site using HTTP S protocol. How to do that? There are two ways again. Obviously, as you might ex expect, the simplest way is to remove the HTTP binding. So if I go to IIS, uh, I mean the default website, and then click on this bindings, and if I remove HTTP binding, what's going to happen? Obviously, any website that I have installed on this IIS server, I will not be able to access it using HTTP protocol. So if I close that, and if I try to come here and then try to access this, I get an error, you know, HTTP 404. But whereas if I come here, I will still be able to access this because there's a binding for that. Now, if I do this 
if I remove the binding, then none of the web applications that are present on this IIS server will be accessible over HTTP protocol, which we definitely don't want to do. So let's go ahead and add that binding back. So click on Add, and I'm going to add that HTTP binding back. And look at the port numbers. HTTP uses port 80, and HTTPS uses 443. Okay, now what's the other way? The other way is basically for that web application, if you have multiple web applications, then you can configure this on a per web application basis. So I select the web application and then I select this SSL settings. Now, since we have both the bindings now, I should be able to access even using HTTP now. Okay, but then look at this. I'm going to come here, select the web application one, and then look at this SSL settings. I'm going to select that and I'm going to say require SSL, meaning anybody who's going to access this site, they need to access this using SSL secure socket layer. And I'm going to apply that. That's it. Now, if I come here and if I try to access that using HTTP protocol, look at what's going to happen. I get an error. Okay, 403.44 forbidden. And if you look at this, the page you are trying to access is secured with SSL meaning you should only be able to access this using HTTPS. So I click that, look at that, I'm able to access that without any issues. Okay, so that's how we can disallow HTTP protocol access to a web application. Okay, now let's go ahead and look at how to import and export a feature of IIS. Okay, so basically within IIS, I can export and import keys. For example, if you look at these certificates that I have here, now, I want to export this key, you know, to a certificate file. Is it possible? Absolutely. How do I export that? Select that certificate, click on export, and then you can specify the name. Let's call this maybe sample, and then maybe you can give it a name. I'm going to call that, I mean, a password. So I'm giving password, and then click OK. So it's exported. Now, where is it exported? By default, it's going to be exported to C windows backslash system32. So within system32, look at that sample.pfx, personal information exchange. So that's the certificate file extension. Now once you have them exported, you can actually import them if you want. Okay, and the way you import them is by using this import. So import the certificate, I can specify the path, where is that present in C colon uh, Windows system32. And here, you can actually select your file, sample.pfx. I click Open. And then you need to specify the password. And allow this certificate to be exported. If you don't check this option, if I uncheck this, I click OK. I have that certificate imported. And I think this is the same thing. Now look at this. If I select this, OK, I think since I have it already here, let me remove that. Let me try to import that now. So I'm going to import that certificate once again. So from C colon backslash vendors backslash system32 and sample.pfx. I'm going to uncheck this. I'm going to specify the password as test. I click OK. Now look at this. When I select this, I don't have that export option. Why? Because uh, when we were creating or importing that certificate, we have unchecked that option. Similarly, when we are creating the certificate using hyphen, you know, makecert.exe, if you don't use hyphen PE switch option, then this certificate cannot be exported or cannot be saved into a certificate file. Okay, so we have discussed about importing and exporting, you know, certificates using the import and export feature of IIS. In the next video session, we'll discuss about how to redirect users, you know, from HTTP to HTTPS automatically. On this slide, you can find resources for ASP.NET, C Sharp, and SQL Server interview questions. That's it for today. Thank you for listening. Have a great day.